Today we're going to talk about the five reasons you need a tripod for landscape photography. So first, let me just say, it's pretty nice to be outside and recording a video. I've been doing a lot of in the office talking head videos, which is great when the, that's what I need to do for the time. But it's been sort of nice to get outdoors bright and early this morning to be outside. So that's pretty awesome. But let's get on with this video. So I've talked a lot about tripods on my videos from talking about specific models of tripods to tips to using a tripod to whether you use a center column or not and things like that. But I've never really dug into the reasons that a landscape photographer should use a tripod and why it should be considered an essential piece of gear for the landscape photographer. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive into five reasons why I think a tripod is an essential piece of gear for a landscape photographer. <music> First one is really the obvious one. A tripod gives you a stable base to put your camera on to shoot from while you're out practicing landscape photography. So why is a stable base important for landscape photographers? Well one, we like to shoot at a lower ISO, ISO 100, ISO 200, ISO 64, just so we have the highest quality image file that we possibly can and capture all those details, all those colors, low noise, and capture all of that. But there's a couple factors as a landscape photographer that keeps us uh, doesn't let as much light into the camera, making those low ISO numbers harder without a tripod. For example, aperture. Aperture controls the depth of field. We like deep depths of field from front to back of the image, so we're going to be shooting around apertures f11, f14, f16, all of which let less light into the camera, meaning if we're shooting at a low ISO, higher aperture, we've got to let more light in the camera, and the way we do that is through a longer shutter speed. Our shutter speeds tend to be a little slower because we need to get that light in so we can have that low ISO and deeper depth of field. So for example, we might be shooting at, like right now I'm shooting at one-fifth of a second. I've had too much coffee to hold hand hold that so I have a tripod makes it nice and stable and eliminates the camera shake that I would get at one fifth I can't hand hold that shot as I try to take a picture of this tree with the light hitting it so that's why a stable platform is important it lets us have full control over some of those other elements we care about low ISO higher apertures get those deep depths of field which means we're gonna run slower shutter speeds so that stable base is super important to it it eliminates that camera shake that we'd see with those slower shutter speeds in our work and if you introduce telephoto lenses to your landscape photography for those small scenes, those intimates, really picking out the details, it gets even harder to handhold one of these lenses where the stable base becomes even more important. When you're zoomed out to 400 millimeters on a 100-400, it doesn't take much movement at all to create a blurry image. So being able to put this on a tripod and have that stable platform to shoot from lets me get nice, sharp, crisp images, even zoomed out to 400 millimeters, and still keep my eyes to down, still keep my aperture up, and still shoot at a shutter speed that lets enough light. That's one of the important things of a tripod for landscape photography. It gives you a stable platform so you have more options over that shutter speed to get the images that you need. Moving on to reason number two, I think a landscape photographer needs a tripod, is when you get into long exposures. We talked about stability, which allows you to get to shutter speeds that capture the image with enough light, but there's times you want to use long shutter speeds to get those smooth looks of water, maybe over a waterfall or down a stream or the clouds moving in the sky or a seascape crashing onto the seashore, those longer shutter speeds can give you that nice soft look and get that effect you want. We all know from my channel I like to photograph waterfalls, so long exposures is something I use a lot. Because when I'm photographing those waterfalls, I want the water to move through the frame. And to do that, depending on the speed of the waterfall, I need to sometimes have a second or two, maybe more, of shutter time, of the shutter being open, to get that effect. And I can't hand hold that or all the rocks near the waterfall will get blurry. So a tripod opens up the window to have more ability to work with 
creative effects with your photography with long exposures. Again, for water, waterfalls, streams, clouds, waves crashing onto the beach. All those things are things that become an option when you have a tripod in order to keep that shutter open for a longer period of time and get that long exposure effect. So it's another creative tool for your landscape photography. So reason number three that a tripod can be handy is for exposure bracketing. It's another tool of the trade for the landscape photographer. A lot of times we're outdoors, we're photographing scenes with high dynamic range, meaning you have some brights maybe up in the sky, like this scene I've got right here. I've got brights up in the sky. I've got shadows off in the shoreline over here. And the camera, while our eye can see that very clearly, our cameras still are limited in their dynamic range of how many tones they can see from the bright to the darks in one capture. So an exposure bracket where you capture exposed for the highlights, make sure you have those exposed for maybe the mids and then exposed for the shadows and you can end up with three images that you can blend together in Photoshop to get a well exposed image. Sort of the workaround to how our cameras, even though they're getting better at dynamic range, still aren't as good as our eye. So a tripod allows you to more easily capture those images for your exposure bracket because I'm able to get set up on this nice stable platform. Take my first image, take my second image, take my third image, because it provides a stable base, my composition is not changing, and I'm able to blend those together in Photoshop, still get nice crisp images, even though it's maybe two, three, four images all blended together. So it's just one of those things that a tripod enables you to use more advanced techniques to get the images you want while you're out in the field and take them home and get them looking good. So the fourth reason that using a tripod for landscape photographer is essential is another more advanced technique called focus stacking. And this is a way we can artificially increase our depth of field by taking multiple images of the same scene, moving our focus point through the scene. I've done several videos on focus stacking. I will link to them in the description down below. But essentially what you do is you line up your scene and maybe you've got lots of elements in the foreground all the way through the back. Your even F14, F16 is not going to get you what you want. So you can take one image with the focus point close to you, move it a little further into the scene, further into the scene, and further in the scene, and then blend those three, four, five images together into one well-focused image from front to back of the image. Tripod makes that possible because you've got that nice stable base. You can get your composition set and take those three or four images and not change anything. It gives you that stable platform. So again, a slightly more advanced technique for a landscape photographer, but it's nice to have that tool in your arsenal and a tripod enables you to do that to be able to focus stack those images. So when you need that technique, you have the tools necessary to do so. And finally, using a tripod can make you slow down a little bit. You get set up on here, you want to choose your composition, and you can sort of focus in on the composition. Now, in other videos, I've always recommend sort of move around handheld, look for your compositions. Once you find something that's ballpark of what you want, then set up your tripod and start working from there. But by working on a tripod, you can really sort of fine tune those compositions. You've got your base set, maybe a little tweak to the left, to the right, up, down, but you can really sort of work through it without hand holding it and completely losing your composition or trying to line things back up just right. You can get composition set, look at it on the back of the camera, think, oh, I should bump this over just like a half inch this way, see if it improves the composition. It just sort of gives you a platform to work from. Again, I always recommend sort of scouting your composition handheld first because the con to this is sometimes once you get your tripod set up, you quit moving and looking around. But once you've got the general idea of what you want, get your tripod set up, make those fine tune adjustments and really dial in that composition. It sort of gets you that stable platform, that stable place to work from to do that. So precision of your composition can be improved by your tripod if you sort of work through those steps. So that's it. Those are the five reasons I think tripod is an essential tool for a landscape photographer. Now, before people get too riled up, yes, I shoot without a tripod. There are times to do it. There's times I set up a main camera on the tripod, do my shots, and handheld shoot a second. So don't take this as you can only shoot from a tripod. Just take it as I think a tripod is an essential tool for a landscape photographer to have the creative options open to them while they're out there pursuing the craft. So let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd like to hear your thoughts on tripods. Yes, no, all the time, none of the time, only when absolutely 
absolutely needed. Love to hear what your thoughts on it down in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.